Recently, there's been some discussion in the knife community on edge finish and sharpening and the effects that that has on performance. There are some people that hold the opinion that edge finish and sharpening doesn't make uh, very much difference at all or very little difference. And there's some people that feel that edge finish and sharpening makes a huge difference. The subject is more complicated than a black and white answer. Uh, the application of the knife can make a difference. Uh, the steel being used can make a difference. The type of abrasives being used can make a difference. And I think a lot of this is being lost. People are they're looking for an easy answer to the question, and it's simply, it's just not as simple as that. There are certain steels that I don't take to a high polish. Uh, certain, certain carbide uh, content where, given the abrasives that I typically use, trying to take the steel to a high polish doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And beyond that, there's performance that I see with uh, a more coarse finish that really tends to do a good job. I mean, stuff that I pick up on in use. At the same time, there's other steels that I will take to a high polish. Uh, steels that I, I see a, uh, an increase in performance through use, and so I prefer to take them to a high polish. CTS XHP is one of those steels, and this is a Spyderco Chaparral in CTS XHP. CTS XHP is a powdered metallurgy steel made by Carpenter. It's a high carbon, high chromium steel. Um, you're talking about 1.6 carbon, 16% chromium. Uh, beyond that, you've got a, a small amounts of a few other things. You've got 0.5 manganese, 0.8 moly, 0.45 vanadium, a couple other things in there. XHP is a steel that in the past, there's been a, a few times I've been critical of it, but since then, I've carried the steel a significant amount and I've sharpened it a significant amount, and it's a steel that I've really come to appreciate. Carpenter describes the steel as either being uh, a powdered high hardness 440C or a stainless D2, and I really don't agree with either one of those assessments. The reasoning that I don't agree with that is because of not only the way that the steel sharpens, but the performance that I see out of it. And I, I think that trying to boil the, the, the steel down to a variation of either one of those two steels is, is selling it short. The Chaparral is a model that wasn't real high on my list. It wasn't really on my radar. And somebody had mentioned to me that they they saw that Sal Glesser had talked about it, I think, on the Spyderco forum, and that caught my attention. I started looking into the knife, and when I got into the specs of the knife, I saw how thinly ground the blade was, and the fact that it was XHP, I mean, those two, those two points in combination really caught my attention. Now, the other thing that caught my attention about this model in particular was the price point. The price point of this model is great. It's it's really very reasonably priced for what you get. So, I mean, after that, I kind of knew, I kind of knew then that I was going to be picking this model up at some point. Recently, when all this discussion started about edge finish and sharpening, I thought to myself, maybe it's time to pick this up and run a test and see if in a, in a test, in a, in a test environment, I can show a difference in performance through edge finish. I picked up the knife and it's it's done very well. The knife is made in Tai Chung and they did a very good job with it. The blade is nice and thin. Um, at a glance, they, I mean, the, the bevel was set pretty close to 30 inclusive and at a glance it was done very well. Very sharp, I was very happy with it out of the box. I wanted to, for this test, I wanted to do, of course, a coarse finish and a high polish and I could have gone super extreme with both, and I, I kind of decided not to. I kind of decided to be more reasonable with it. So I was gonna, I was almost gonna start out with the polished, the polished finish first. But you know, if you if you start on diamond, I mean, it's it's difficult to take out a diamond scratch pattern. But working with diamond plates, and DMT diamond plates, they're they're absolutely flat. What DMT calls true flat, and 
because the abrasive is so strong, it's easy to clean up a bevel or even reprofile a knife. So starting with a fine DMT, I was going to start with the course, but I knew that if I worked with the course, I would at least want to bring it down to a, a fine DMT, and that was going to reset the scratch pattern to the, the, the fine grit anyway. So I went ahead and started with the fine. Uh, it's still a fairly new DMT plate, so I knew it would cut aggressively enough that it would, it would do what I needed it to do. So using the fine DMT, I cleaned up the bevel, uh, set it at a, a solid 30 inclusive, uh, and I kept a, a very, vi very tight V-grind on the edge. That was important for this testing. I really wanted this test to be about edge finish and not about other variables within the sharpening. Using the fine DMT, I apexed the blade and then did a little bit of burr reduction work with the diamond plate. After that, to make sure that I had the burr out of the equation, I worked with a 4 micron uh, leather strop, 4 micron diamond strop on leather, and really kept my use of that strop to a minimum just to make sure that, uh, that the burr was gone and that the knife was sharp. Even though I was working with a coarse finish, I wanted to bring the knife to a high level of sharpness. I thought that that was fair to do, um, as opposed to just, say, working on a coarse diamond plate and that's it, and leaving it at that. And then you've got burr and, and edge that I would consider unfinished. I didn't think that that was really fair. The test was push cutting. I wanted to use cardboard. Um, I was using about one inch of blade. The bevel was at 30 inclusive. The cardboard that I was using was kind of a middleweight cardboard. It wasn't the heaviest stuff that I've ever used, but it wasn't the lightest stuff either. With the coarse finish, the knife cut 1,475 inches of cardboard, which was more than I had planned. I wasn't expecting it to be that much. Um, I kind of expected when this was all said and done to have uh, cardboard left over for other things. I was a little bit surprised at 1475 off the coarse edge. But at this, you know, on the other side of things, I did just buy the knife and you don't want it to do poorly. So So all right, 1475. I needed to to test the the polished edge next. I went back to the diamond plates and re-apexed the knife with the fine DMT. Then moved on to an extra extra fine DMT just to work the scratch pattern down a little bit. After the extra extra fine, I moved on to a 500 grit shafting. Using the 500 grit, I removed the scratch pattern that was there. I was going out of my way to keep the bevel really tight. After the 500 grit, I moved on to a 2000 grit shafting, then a 6000 grit shafting, then a 10,000 grit Suhiro, and a 20,000 grit Suhiro. After that, I moved on to a 1 micron diamond strop on leather, then a half micron diamond strop on leather and then a quarter micron diamond strop on leather. I'm not using a guided system for this, and I'm testing with the edge. So there can be an argument posed uh, about the sharpening. If you look at what I've done, uh, the grind is very tight. Uh, the polish is done very well. The consistency is there. The knife was at 30 inclusive. And in both cases, I put the knife into an angle guide to make sure, make sure that it hadn't, there was no variation in it. I also put the edges under a microscope just to see. One of the things that a microscope will do is if there's any variation in your angle on the edge bevel, oftentimes it'll show up under the microscope. And in these cases, there was nothing. I repeated the test with the, the polished edge, one inch of blade. Uh, push cutting with the polished edge the knife cut 1722 inches of cardboard so what you're talking about there is about around a 15 percent difference um i'm not surprised at that number um i almost wouldn't have been surprised if it had been higher but it does show i mean it does stand as as evidence that Given certain applications with certain steels, a high polish on the edge makes a difference in the edge retention. I mean, 15% is a pretty decent amount. 15% in a testing environment could
could could easily come off or be 20% in real world use. That's I mean 20% that's that's a lot. That's a that's a big number. You know, that kind of increase. And that can be the difference between two different steals easily. So 15% give or take a couple points, I think that's fair to say. I think that makes a lot of sense. So I was happy with the test and, and I was happy that I was able to attack the subject and I think I thought that the whole thing turned out well. I was happy with the sharpenings and the consistency and all that. I think that it's it's a a bad idea to try and simplify some subjects. Uh, you know, within within the world of sharpening and performance and all that, you can certainly come out and say that you have preferences, and that's fine. And really, if that's what you're saying, nobody can argue with it. Or you can say, look, I'm just not going to put that much time in. But to come out and say um, something like, you know what, it doesn't make any sense to go past a, a coarse stone in sharpening, it's, it's not that simple. It just isn't. It's more complicated than that. There's more that goes into it. And just putting that out, you know, if if, if somebody has read something or, or seen some kind of a chart or something like that and misinterpreted that information and tries to turn around and they're posting something online and you've got people reading it and, and you don't want to send people in the wrong direction. So I mean, that was really why I wanted to, to clarify the subject that, that it's it's not as simple as, as one set rule for these things. After the test, before I was going to carry this knife again, I needed to resharpen it. I had an opportunity with a new, a new, uh, a new compound that Ken Schwartz uh, had talked to me about to, to push the limits with this. I wanted to take it as far as I could. I mean, I figured why not with XHP? I like to take it to take it to a high polish anyway and carry it that way. So, for the final sharpening to get the knife back in my pocket, I started with a 500 grit shafton and I worked with that. I apexed the knife, cleaned everything up, took the wear out of the edge. I then moved on to a 600 grit Nubatama. Now, I really didn't need to use a 600 grit Nubatama, but the stone is new to me and I just wanted to, to put a knife on it a little bit, see how it did, start to get an idea about it. I bought the 600 grit Nubatama to replace the 500 grit Shafton. Um, not that I don't like the Shafton, it's just I've worn it down to a very a very small amount and I know, I know that I'm going to need to replace it soon. So after working with the 600 grit Nubatama, I moved on to a 2000 grit Shapton. Worked with that, then a 6000 grit Shapton, then a 10,000 grit Suhiro, and a 20,000 grit Suhiro. After that, I started in on a, a rather long series of strops, starting with a 1 micron diamond strop, then moved on to a half micron and a quarter micron. After that, I moved on to a tenth micron. After that, I moved on to the more extreme levels of, of abrasives in, in compounds moving down to a 0 0.05 micron, then a 0 0.025 micron. Then I moved down to a 0 0.005 micron. Now, you've got to understand, a 0 0.005 micron is 3.2 million grit. So, it is it is extreme. Um, no other way of looking at it. After the 0 0.005, I moved on to a 0 0.003 micron which is a new product by Ken Schwartz. He hadn't sold it yet. He hadn't even announced it yet or really talked about it. Me and Ken had talked and he had told me about it and he was, you know, I guess he was ready to release it and, and let it hit the market and was looking for the right, the right time to do that and the right venue to do it. So I picked up the compound from him. Um, 0 0.003 micron is five million grit. It is, as far as I know, as extreme as you can take it. I mean, it's as, it's as fine as you can take it. Um, the degree to which this, the, the, the diamond particles in this compound are, to say that they're small, I mean, it's, it's on a level that's unreal. The level of polish that came up on the blade, uh, really taking a, a close look at it in good light, is a beautiful polish. It's really... Uh, it's pleasing to look at. Um, 
I was very happy with the, the quality of the compound, and I thought that the edge turned out really well. Um, also, to say that the edge is, is mirrored is absolutely a fair statement to make. Now, the other thing that happened was the sharpness came up. Uh, with this edge, with XHP, it takes a fine edge and uh, takes a very sharp edge very well. Uh, I really enjoy that aspect of it. But following through this pattern, bringing the edge to a mirror polish, and then taking it to such an extreme point on strops, um, it really, really brings the sharpness up. It really does. And I was really pleased with it. I was really happy with the way that it turned out. So the compound is excellent. I'm looking forward to working with it more, taking things to that extreme and seeing what I find. But, but I thought that XHP was an appropriate steel to start on, uh, given that it's, uh, it is a super steel and it's powdered metallurgy. And it's a steel that I like to take to a very fine edge, a very high polish anyway. As an added bonus to all this, I mean, the, the test was good. Um, I, I was excited to use a new product, something that hadn't even been released yet. But as an added bonus to the whole thing, I was very pleased with this model. I've gotten several Spydercos in FRN recently, and this is by far uh, the most impressive out of them. Um, I think the main thing that I'm picking up on the main, the main factor that's, that's playing into that being my opinion is, uh, the backspacer, the backspacer on this model is it's a full stainless steel backspacer and it gives, uh, the knife, a feel that's, it comes off as being more solid than some of the other FRN models. The other thing that it does is the it changes your perception of fit and finish on the knife. Um, some of the FRN models that I, you know, other ones that I've had, the, the backspacer is just plastic. Where there would, or where there would be a backspacer is just plastic. Sometimes things don't always line up, or it just, it looks a little bit off. But with this, I mean, I'm sure that it doesn't hurt that it was done in the, the Taichung factory, but everything looks like uh, it's supposed to be that way. I mean, I feel strongly enough about it that I don't know why Spyderco isn't doing this with all their FRN models. I mean, if it was up to me, I would I would just do everything this way from now on. I think that it's it's really an improvement over having FRN as the backspacer. The other thing about this model is, I mean, this it almost comes this model almost comes off like a like a Delica with a leaf-shaped blade and a 50-50 choil in it. But it's executed very well. It's The knife is extremely smooth coming out. It's it's not over... It doesn't have an uh, overly strong back spring. But it does have enough that you're... It's not going to come open in your pocket. I, I think that it was... I think that it was executed very well. And I'm very pleased with it. I can really... I mean, I'm, I'm already really considering picking up another one just to set aside because I know that I want to really put this through a lot of use and really be rough with it, sharpen it over and over and over again. I'm really looking forward to that. So time will tell on whether or not I'll pick up another one, but I was very pleased with this model. I think that Spyderco did a good job with it. So I was happy with the test. I was happy with the sharpenings and the new compounds, and I think this is a great knife.